Hi, uh, mm-hmm. welcome to Future Path, and uh, we have uh, Kaushik Kaushik uh, Banerjee, the author of this book. And uh, I'm very excited to have this conversation because this is going to bring a very different perspective to what we are talking about future future paths and how things are changing while we are looking at the future. Here is going to be one conversation with uh, Kaushik, who's uh, who's trying to uh, look at his uh, uh, understanding of uh, his present from uh, from a book which was written, perhaps uh, not a book written, but something which was told as a verse probably seven eight thousand years ago. Uh, so uh, and uh, this conversation is about trying to understand. Uh, how we got into doing it and what's in it for each of us and uh, what is what could be our takeaways out of these things and how can we look at uh, tapping into this age-old uh, resources and which uh, Kaushik has done a, a great job in trying to, uh, uh, you know, uh, stitch it from a point of relevance to today's uh, business or even a startup or entrepreneurial journey or even innovation, or, uh, or uh, also the way we live, the way we react to things. And uh, things. so uh, Kaushik, thanks for that effort. And above all, thanks for joining us here. So, so uh, uh, can you share with us what took your journey to this from being a, you know, in the technology professional to startup mentor to uh, being an author, seems a very natural journey, but uh, this particular book. Yeah, actually, uh, Nanju, uh, we are like quite a close friend and you know the, the downs of my life uh, a pretty long time because after, you know, so suddenly in 2013 onwards, I, uh, I, had, I started having a lot of health problems, you know, one after my, uh, other, my uh, vital organs were getting impacted, you know. One by one, um, you know, that I used to go go and visit the ICU and, you know, frequently. And um, all um, uh, I remember in the, those years, I was just visiting ICU, coming out, meeting doctors, taking, uh, doing umpteen number of tests. Uh, so in the midst of all these things, the life had lost totally meaning for me and uh, absolutely zero purpose. And, you know, sometimes I used to even question why I'm living just to pay visits to the doctor and ICU. Uh, and there was honestly, uh, there is no uh, qualm in telling that, you know, I had this uh, strong feeling of depression surrounding me. And, uh, you know, my wife used to say, to why don't you go and meet a psychologist? He can help you to come out of this. Uh, I was contemplating that and suddenly uh, a copy of Bhagavad Gita came to my hand and initially I started reading it. Uh, couldn't understand much, but, you know, I thought I will stick around and it is like, you know, as if in the dark, I saw some light and I keep reading it, um, you know, um, day after day. And then uh, suddenly, you know, a lot of things started opening up in my mind. And then slowly I was able to come out of this hollowness and depression and started uh, rejuvenating myself and uh, try to find a uh, new meaning and purpose of life. And uh, then I thought, why not write a book on this? Because um, I have mentioned partly about my journey as well as what people can learn professionally and personally from Bhagavad Gita. And while, you know, contemplating to write this, I found out that uh, this, uh, the Bhagavad Gita also has so much of learnings for us, which are positive psychology, uh, stream of positive psychology, brain science, uh, leadership, and then uh, management, innovation, experts can learn from. In fact, most of the contemporary talks on these subjects actually can be uh, traced back to Bhagavad Gita if uh, we go deeper into this locus. So the book is a culmination of personal and professional um, uh, try to you know give this professional and personal enlightenment to people, as well as uh, these findings are actually um, you know discussed, and there are umpteen number of examples of people who have knowingly and unknowingly used the principles of Bhagavad Gita to excel in life. For example, uh, 
you know, people like uh, Dhirubhai Ambani. I don't know whether he has read Bhagavad Gita, but his life I have mentioned. Uh, footballer Ronaldo, Messi, how they rose from very ordinary life to make an extraordinary life. Um, having so much of impediments in terms of poverty and stuff like that. So the idea is, uh, if we look at it a lot, you know, the subtle message of Bhagavad Gita is, you are the supreme, that thou art, you, are the, you have the power, but we don't realize it and we get cowed down by the problems and impediments in our life. And once you, we can cross... That was my next question. Hmm. Why that thou art? <laughs> so that the word is that the, the, the supreme, to awaken the supreme force in you, to realize the supreme force in you, to have a self-realization. What happens, Nanju, in our uh, scripts, they say that when you look at a mirror, if it is clean, you see yourself. Now with passage of time, with prejudice, you know, ahankar, anger, lust, etc., you know, a lot of other uh, emotions actually covers, uh, puts a dust around that mirror. So you see a partial image of yours. And books like Bhagavad Gita helps you to actually remove the dust as much as possible if you imbibe the principles. And uh, uh, what, what was the trigger uh, for you from a point of rediscovering yourself, if you say, right? What was that first aspect of trigger for you in this? Honestly, as I told you, Nanju, I had no hopes about life. I was like deep into desperation and depression, which normally people never realize because they feel that, you know, apparently I put up a very smiling, jovial and uh, this space, but internally I was getting cracked down severely. So I had to turn around and Bhagavad Gita gave me that path to turn around. So when did you think that that shift has happened. What was that trigger? What is it that you felt or somebody felt that you have turned the leaf around? Honestly, um, uh, Nanju, I have started realizing that, you know, slowly I can see the change in my thought process. You know, every day I used to get up and, you know, think that, oh my God, another day I have to go to the doctor or I have to take so much of pills or, you know, that thought started evading away. And I would say that was a turning point. I realized that Bhagavad Gita has start worked, started working on me and it is trying to show me a light. And uh, uh, so in the process, in fact, I also see that this is a volume one, mm -hmm. right? And also you do mention that uh, you want to see the response and uh, uh, then look at putting the volume two. Mm -hmm. So uh, what was that uh, uh, first trigger to write it. You did mention that you you got it so much, so you wanted to share it back, right? Yes. With others. Absolutely, absolutely. Then I realized, and you know, uh, while I was reading, uh, there was one sloka which which really struck with me. It says that uh, I think it's uh, sloka three dot twenty one in Karma Yoga chapter. It says that your life. Uh, you can do two things. If you are, if you want to live an ordinary life, you will follow the uh, ones who inspired you, or you can be a source of inspiration for others. So it's your choice in life, and that kind of really motivated me. I said, "Wow, this is this is a phenomenal statement," and this is what if you see the Western world repackages and sells it to the whole world, including us. Right, right. And I thought, why not give a give a jhatka or give a shake up to the Western world and say, boss, we have all these things in our, in our scripts. Why don't you say so? That's why, you know, I wrote English uh, in English. Somebody told me, why don't you translate it in Hindi also? Because uh, there is a Hindi heartland people who can, um, you know, doesn't know English. Or I said, I'm very much open to it. But the idea was to give that uh, shock and current to the Western world. Like, for example, there is a lady called Dr. Carol Dweck. I read his book while I was going through this cycle of depression. It's called Mindset. Okay, she propagates that there are two kinds of mindset, fixed and growth mindset. Fixed mindset people are people who actually are maybe having very high IQ, very high skills, but they give up when they face trouble. They can't fight it. They can't just cross the chasm. Whereas growth mindset people may not have that kind of IQ, but they say, no, I will cross the chasm under any circumstances. 
So they are the fighter. They will push the wall. They will push the their boundaries. And Colonel Dweck says all successful people have these traits: be it athletics, be it writer, be it professional. Oh, I, I could just connect to Vinod Kamli and Sachin Tendulkar to be together. You, you, you are spot on, actually. Actually, and there was a talk of Harsha Bhogle, if you remember it. He exactly said that on this. Okay. Now, now when I was reading, I said, okay, it's fine. But when I tried to look it at the light of Bhagavad Gita, if you see Arjuna demonstrated fixed mindset. He said, I can't, he dropped his bow and arrow and said, I can't fight. No, but don't you think it was more a natural thing, right? Because it's just not fighting. It's it's your own uncle, your own grandfather, your own cousin. So it's a fairly yeah. natural thing to happen also, so to speak, right? Yes. Now, if you look at it, how Lord Krishna puts it, he says that actually actually people say that you are, uh, well, th there is a chapter I've written that whether Bhagavad Gita talks about violence and, you know, whether he propagates warfare and stuff like that. Actually, Kuru Shetra means, Kuru means, uh, you know, action. Shetra means field. So field of action is nothing but your mind. Okay, Pandavas are your good senses, Kauravas are your bad senses. And Lord Krishna guides your good senses. That's why, you know, ultimately the good prevails over the evil. And more a uh, uh, philosophical angle to philosophical the whole. And Kauravas, and he's, these are symbolically, actually, uh, Paramahansa Yogananda says, these are all, uh, you know, Kauravas can be typically bad habits and we are, we love our bad habits. So for example, drinking, gambling, we get addicted. They become our kin, they become our relatives and we don't want to fight them. Right. right. That's, that's the thing. And uh, uh, what was the point of time where you thought uh, you want to contextualize it? See, uh, as I told you, uh, Danju, I used to read a uh, lot of these uh, self-help books and all, uh, you know, but they were, I felt they were partial. Mm, but uh, when I read Bhagavad Gita, I said, this is so comprehensive and complete and it gives such a clear direction. Uh, and, uh, you know, um, the reason I'm talking about these violence things I brought up, in Russia, they wanted to ban Bhagavad Gita. They said it's a book which propagates violence. Was it? Some um, years back, then uh, I think the ISKCON and other um, organizations came together and tried to explain these things. So the, in the Western world, there is a, you know, there is some such things happen that it propagates violence and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so that was the whole thing which I thought that, you know, I wanted to show my plain humble thing was uh, suggestion to the whole world was that look, whatever we talk about, the timeless classics actually has it. So that was, a, if you say the contextualization or the trigger point or whatever it is. Right. See, I don't want to uh, get you to talk about every aspect of the book, but uh, hmm. I would still like to touch upon a few things so that you share some context and uh, I'm sure that could uh, also perhaps, uh, uh, you know, uh, get the curiosity of uh, Business to go for it because some of these kind of books are always a keeper. You can always revisit once in a while. So, uh, so uh, you one of the uh, sections is about mentor and seeker relationship. So, Absolutely. particularly we, uh, you know, we've seen it enough in the startup ecosystem also, right? So, uh, so many a times we see a mentor uh, instead of uh, looking at helping give directions would uh, start dictating uh, it's almost like a backseat driving so uh, so that is one context part of it right from a mentor and uh, uh, the seeker or the uh, uh, so uh, many a times uh, uh, people come with a very different expectation from a mentor uh, and uh, what they speak is something and what they seek is something else Absolutely. Right. So in this context and uh, in the context of how you approach mentor seeker, how do you want to contextualize it? So if you look at the whole um, conversation between Arjuna and uh, Lord Krishna, you will see Arjuna 
was doubtful. He he had said that, what are you telling uh, Parth? You are my friend, you are telling me to fight. You are telling me to go for violence. He, you know, he had doubt. Lord Krishna showed tremendous amount of patience to clear those doubts. And he was reinforcing the point that Arjuna, Arjuna you are fighting for dharma. You are not fighting just as a warrior. So if you look at it, he puts together a huge purpose in front of Arjuna, that you are not a warrior. You are not fighting just for the sake of uh, participating like a typical Kshatriya takes part in the war. You have a purpose. If you do not participate in the war, Adharma will prevail in this world and it will destroy the mankind. So as I mentioned, he shows so the bigger setting purpose. a higher purpose, higher goal. Absolutely. You are bang on the point. And you see the, the patience with which he takes the 18th chapter of conversation. And uh, many a times Arjuna questioned. And one time he said uh, that uh, how can uh, you are telling this can be true? In one of the chapters, uh, Lord Krishna says, I am like Adi Anant, like, you know, I am the start, I am the end, I am the middle. He said, how can that be? You know, he questions. So now if in our <laughs> real life context, if somebody questions a mentor, his ego gets hurt. He said, oh, how do you know? How much you know about the world? But see, being Lord Krishna, he said, he patiently answers that question. So that those things I have put together, you know, mentor seeker relationship. Mm. And, uh... and also I have given one of our real life example, uh, uh, your uh, Warren Buffy and his guru, and um, you know those uh, that, that how he perceived his guru because he had a lot of questions. You know, he says sometimes it was very stupid questions, but uh, you know they were they were patiently answered by him. Right. I uh, another thing what I uh, liked is that see I'm also been. Uh, uh, I mean, I've, I, I, I read uh, Khalil Gibran. I don't uh, keep revisiting it as much as I would have liked to. But I, I always thought Khalil Gibran was perhaps one philosopher who was uh, closest to Eastern thinking, right? Our thinking. Absolutely. Uh, uh, I mean, maybe he's from Middle East, but uh, he was recognized. Uh, evolved more in Paris and Europe, so he was more a Westerner from us in that context. But uh, his thinking was uh, more Far East than Middle East from where he came. So, uh, uh, so, uh, so, what wh what was the reason for bringing him in the context here? Why Gibran here? See, Gibran's quote, if you read. Uh, it, it has a lot of relevance in, in terms of understanding, uh, you know, what, uh, how you should um, set the context for learning as a teacher, as a, you know, mentor. That, that was the whole whole idea, you know. So, oh, I, I uh, remember one thing, which, uh, uh, you know, I, uh, I obviously read uh, much before I became a parent. But hmm. one thing uh, Gibran says, I mean, not verbatim. Just the context because that's how I yeah. is that uh, your uh, the parents are like a bow and uh, children are like arrows. So Absolutely. bow does not set direction to the arrow. So uh, so it only gives the sufficient uh, uh, thrust required for arrow to travel farthest and reach its destination. Exactly. So. Uh, so uh, that is so Indian, right? I mean, so Eastern in the case. Exactly, and uh, uh, his uh, his uh, this book, Prophet, is a phenomenal, actually. Yeah, this is from Prophet, of course. Yeah, yeah this it's, is from Prophet. One, one more line I remember, which I, what made me think that his thinking is so Eastern or Indian is that uh, uh, about giving, uh, you know, in the Prophet, they ask, uh, Prophet, please tell us about giving, and it says about giving, uh, uh, not again, go back to my, my memory is that way pretty bad. Uh, but I, I try to, uh, it's more an interpretation of what I understand is that it is, uh, uh, think not the person is worthy enough to be given. Think whether you are worthy, uh, uh, think, uh, uh, I mean, uh, something to the extent that don't think whether the person is worthy of 
uh, you to be giving him correct right think whether you are worthy enough to uh, give him so uh, which is which is so indian in the context of you know here uh, an ability to receive is bigger than an ability to give uh, right so Absolutely. that is i think he's the only person though the whole warren buffet to everybody talk about giving uh, uh, but uh, it's a very very indian thinking of uh, a person who is able to receive is big because it's about killing your ego and being ego. able to receive yes absolutely 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 so uh, yeah i think in one of our scripts it says that you when you give something you are also giving a part of your soul to that person right but today our giving is more about uh, being seen being told and also it's become a moment of pleasure right uh, that uh, there are people who run these campaigns of joy of giving you know it's very a uh, self gratifying uh, thing yeah uh, so it somewhere it takes away the core of uh, the true value right i mean it it's not about uh, being uh, able to uh, identify or take out your core identity absolutely absolutely so and, uh, uh, mostly people do it and they just click it in social media and put it up there and uh, right <laughs> i mean do appreciate those who give out uh, blankets in the winter and all that but but true uh, but it's more about uh, self gratification which is the unfortunate part absolutely so, absolutely. so i think that is where uh, uh, you know i i i i really liked your approach uh, in this book is that uh, it's it's uh, it it uh, brings these small small things into the uh, uh, today's context and also taking something out of uh, uh, out of uh, of the uh, the history so old right, right. Uh, which uh, the world made us believe is more myth than real yes yes absolutely thank and, you so uh, today we are no today we are kind of reclaiming it and you are part of that exercise of reclaim reclaiming we are actually you are right absolutely we are in the in the process of reclaiming it so absolutely. and uh, uh, so do you uh, do you want to uh, another thing uh, nanju, nanju i don't know whether you have read this there was one uh, article i read somewhere with uh, you know in 1837 lord macaulay came to india and he said that only way we can um, uh, make these people our slaves is to destroy their spiritual thinking and put our education system into that so another objective i don't know whether it will be fulfilled is to tell the younger generation that don't look at west don't read seven habits of effective leader because the author himself said that he was inspired by bhagavad stephen kobe said he was inspired by Correct. bhagavad gita so so these are the things But, people uh, don't know uh, ironically uh, that book sells a uh, hundred uh, or a million times more i mean it's still a good book it's uh, yeah. but uh, see i think that is where uh, the part of reclaiming it see there are a lot of uh, people who have started uh, writing it and uh, i think also uh, people like you coming from uh, technology and business and trying to contextualizing it in this sense this makes it uh, um, uh, i think it's i think it's a part of the process of people start feeling little more comfortable in their own shoes absolutely absolutely right or, or maybe in their own feet the bare feet to 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 yeah uh, i wanted to uh, uh, pick your uh, thoughts on this mindset and krishna conscious consciousness right so uh, this is where you are talking about as uh, uh, referring to that limiting mindset and uh, evolving mindset right. uh, and uh, you are referring to uh, 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 you know we talked about the sports people as well uh, and uh, arjuna being uh, 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 having a limited mindset so uh, so essentially uh, uh, while we have public personalities who are an example of 
limited to evolving uh, what you're primarily trying to bring about uh, in this is that uh, that uh, whatever the people are as of today will not define them correct so uh, it's it's about trying to tap within inside them to bring about their true potential absolutely so uh, so is it when you say that are you trying to say that is it that uh, every person have some amount of uh, you know uh, energy in their bottle of battery uh, <laughs> or everybody have same amount of energy and some by virtue of whatever right that they are able to realize Uh, a larger portion of their energy and while some maybe by lim- with the because of their limiting mindset in the process of their growth and whatever the other factors they are able to only realize a small portion of their battery yes. and uh, so how do you uh, so one is that okay uh, here in the context of uh, uh, gita in the process of gita through the 18 chapters uh, the exercise of uh, arjuna going through the limited mindset to uh, an evolving mindset see that could possibly be achieved because you know he had lord krishna in front of him and do that so how do you think uh, people like us me you i mean you you are actually on the process so that is what got you to be able to uh, translate it into this book right so what are those uh, some tools maybe not all because obviously the next thing would be that okay it's partially already captured there so what are the few tools you think uh, um, you know people like us as bind standards wherever the degree of battery charge whether we are tapping into 5 10 20% or 30% how do we tap uh, be able to realize that there is lot more to dig yeah actually if you look at um, the uh, verse after verse in bhagavad gita our lord krishna talks about controlling mind you have to control your mind you have to you know control your once you control your mind once you control your buddhi which is intelligence he says emotions will be in control and then you will slowly see a transformational you in uh, coming out from the whole process see if you see most of our uh, uh work um, or karma bolo or whatever you say it is all about uh, you know our our emotions emotion drives thoughts thoughts drives actions okay now he he states that certain certain of these emotions certain of these habits make us uh, or certain of these emotions which make us really uh, he says delusional Uh, i think it's uh, version 2.6 and 60 and 61 where he says it makes us delusional and delusion se buddhi nash hota hai it's like buddhi your intelligence goes away and then you start behaving haywire so essentially his core thinking is that you should control your mind and he gives a very simple prescription yoga okay yoga, yoga helps you to connect with your inner power inner self and he says that helps you to come out of this emotional barriers we have in our life so and this is about a exercise of unlearning letting un- go of some baggages absolutely, absolutely absolutely that's why uh, bhagavad gita has a very lot of talks about this uh, you know detachment we always think he is telling that you become a sanyasi no not at all detachment from the things which can create these emotions so we have to detach ourselves that's what you know there was uh, this beautiful uh, statement by uh, uh, ramakrishna paramahamsa uh, sami vivekananda's guru somebody asked him tell me uh, bhagavad gita in one uh, sentence so he said a beautiful thing he said if you read gita from the reverse direction it is tagi gita tagi uh-huh. means somebody who tags one who gives up Manu is non-attached, so I think we, it is a beautiful okay. way of explaining. Uh, this right, thing. right. Okay, that that's the new for me. I've never heard that. Okay, 
so uh, so what is uh, uh, see what is another interesting part um, uh, in the interest of the audience is that uh, uh, you not only contextualize in the things of uh, how we deal with our biases and acquired biases correct 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 how how do we approach mm-hmm. it but you also uh, you know the book is full of quotes it's almost like a book of quotes <laughs> <laughs> right you no, the the idea is to tell people that see all these quotes actually originate back to bhagavad gita right right yeah yeah, it, yeah it, it's more uh, your uh, note of gratitude for gita but uh, in the process you have created you have uh, collated a whole lot of uh, quotes mm-hmm. and uh, i think uh, uh, this is another way of contextualizing for today's audience Yes, right absolutely. if you are talking about dan price right or if you are referring to uh, uh, some code of conduct in the indian military yes uh, so uh, it's it's just not the stories of uh, uh, krishna and arjuna or yudhishthir and uh, uh, mahabharata or uh, uh, you know detailing the verses uh, in the gita right you you are uh, you are uh, you are making a nice cocktail here <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yes yeah actually yeah um, this connection is like uh, you know leaders again can have two mindset limiting mindset and evolving mindset you know uh, evolving mindset always, and they can uh, be limited and evolving in the same time in different contexts in different contexts absolutely absolutely it's a mix see the idea is uh, how we can minimize the one and in you know, agree with the other one in the every context of, in every context and uh, so but there was this uh, uh, i think uh, sears executives who um, the company went bankrupt they took lot of um, the top executive you know a lot of uh, bonus salary etc so the company went bankrupt is a very very uh, you know myopic and limiting and selfish look whereas people like you know dan price or uh, the the master car ceo ajay banga i think yeah ajay banga so they, they said okay we will we will ensure that you know our people are not suffer or for example the indian military they the code of conduct is very clear that you know uh, as a leader i should be the person who would be standing in front of our people we shouldn't run away from the battlefield my soldiers can run away but i have to stay till last person retreats and uh, similarly you know there is this book which says that leaders uh, eat last it is again an american us uh, uh, i think uh, marine uh, or some some uh, this thing they, they have this uh, 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 you know fundamental thing that you know leaders should eat in the canteen last first the cadet should eat and then the leader should eat last so if we look at the uh, um, you know scripts like pandavas for example uh, they always used to share foods they were not like uh, the duryodhan and kauravas that i want my this thing i want this thing they you know whatever fruit they used to get uh, uh, in that when they were in these guys in banavas they used to share among each other even people who used to come to them they used to give this so this is this is what uh, you know it uh, uh, is a propagation that you know uh, we live not only for ourselves we we'll also live for others and this is a very very powerful message of bhagavad gita when oh, lord right. krishna says i am in every creature it means <laughs> that he wants to tell us that don't live for yourself try to make other lives enlightened enlightened as well yeah in in the same uh, same context of uh, i am in every creature see i think one one thing what uh, really fascinates me about uh, these uh, stories in ramayana or mahabharata mm-hmm. or any of these things is that uh, this is not a uh, god and uh, evil good and bad hero and villain right uh, uh, in fact uh, uh, some of the best i mean if you have to talk about one best story of friendship it is less about krishna and arjuna and more about karna and uh, uh, duryodhan yeah. right i think that's the best uh, uh, best uh, story and if you uh, think of uh, 
reference to a uh, sense of duty as much as about rama's sense of duty towards his uh, father and uh, uh, brother and perhaps wife but the true sense of duty is where uh, ravana actually as a priest comes to perform the yagna of rama to win over ravana exactly exactly <laughs> and the sense of duty of a priest he also comes and blesses rama blesses rama that he succeeds and that is the true sense of duty i think this is a crazy thing right you i mean when we grow up watching all these movies about a hero and a villain and all our uh, all all the comic books of uh, things and uh, here you see that uh, i mean sometimes when people try to contextualize ravana as a bad man is he really a bad man of course he has done some bad things but there true. is no uh, so this is the same context when you say that uh, uh, you know uh, they are fixed and evolved are not two individuals it's the same individual in some context they are very evolved and some context they are absolutely fixed absolutely. so uh, absolutely this is, a, it, is uh, it is it is extremely contextual as you uh, rightly said and um, lord, uh, lord krishna's message is very clear in that respect he says that yes all of us have this you know limiting thoughts process this thing but if you are conscious about yourself then you can consciously try to evolve and life is all about evolving that's what the message is actually it doesn't say that it's one time uh, look at our uh, scripts if you say they say that in one karma you don't sublime to supreme karma after karma you have to you know excel in life in different paths then only you you know finally uh, um, uh, merge with supreme or sublime with supreme so it is it is also a message of innovation <laughs> that is everything is not a one time wonder then you become like blockbuster so another uh, thing for the uh, uh, listeners and the audience is that see at, after every uh, 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 segment because you are not chapter could chapter the mm-hmm. unit so i'll call it segment mm-hmm. that you you put question mm-hmm. uh, questions for the reader for their own uh, yes not taking right from yes, a point yes. of answering and all that i think mm-hmm. uh, uh, that's a uh, uh, that's a, uh, a great effort so you not only try telling stories and capturing quotes to bring the context in you also put in great effort in trying to uh, put together these questions so that reader from that corresponding chapter try to uh, define their own takeaways in their yes. own context yes. i think yes. that's a uh, 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 that's a so just curious where, where did you take that reference out of I mean, where did you get this idea see when I, when i when i was writing uh, nanju i wrote a, quite a bit of the book and then i realized that it becomes like a read you know like i re- i'm reading the book and all but what Here's learnings which, yeah, yeah what what learnings i will be having as a reader or what what will be a take away from me in terms of remembering it working on something and if you are and personalizing enough, and contextualizing at a reader level yes in reader level so that's uh, that's great uh, i i thank uh, you thank you danju no, thank I, you thanks a lot no it's it's nice that uh, uh, you know you uh, it's almost like uh, uh, you know you go through a course and uh, uh, like you know we run some uh, training program and we also put a quiz to ensure that you understand yes so uh, uh, in fact uh, uh, you know your uh, uh, questions obviously helps in contextualizing at a personal level but uh, also uh, brings a perspective to uh, each of these uh, uh, i think you have taken uh, first nine chapters is it yes yes ten, five, first uh, first ten chapters actually ten chapters so each of those uh, chapters are yeah. titled with the yoga the vishada yoga yeah. Yeah. sankhya yoga karma yoga so so uh, so it makes it uh, uh, very in a very personal contextualized way of relating to each chapter see i think that is another uh, uh, unique unique thing about it 
uh, what you have. Uh, uh, thanks a lot for appreciating, Nanju. So uh, no, I, I, I uh, see. I think you put in lot of effort. Uh, so uh, uh, so I'm I'm just trying to follow uh, that uh, thing. What Gibran says is that uh, let us learn to receive. So that's what I said. So <laughs> when you're you're coming forward to give, the best we could do or the least. And the best, both the same. Ironically, yes, is absolutely. that how do we receive? Right? It's always absolutely. easy for. Uh, see, I think problem is maybe our system is such that we are better taught to find fault and criticize. So, uh, so that is another thing. In fact, uh, at the end of it, uh, even in uh, Gita, Krishna says that uh, uh, you are free to take it or even leave it. So there is no nothing uh, in the way uh, uh, the monotheistic approach of this is it and this is all, Correct. right? So it is still an option. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, so uh, towards this, uh, I I I, uh, I would like to uh, get uh, two things from you now. Yeah. Uh, stepping out of the book. Uh, uh, which is one is that uh, can you think of uh, people who have influence because see uh, uh, whatever the tough time you are going through uh, 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 whatever way the, the Bhagavad Gita landed in your hand I think somewhere in the course of your upbringing there are various influences right uh, uh, that uh, which perhaps also led to that moment of you getting to that book. So uh, is there somebody you think, uh, see, uh, maybe if I were to ask you this question 15 years ago while you are in your thriving career, you would have probably took somebody else as who are the big influences of your life. Sure. But today, going through this cycle and try, you know, finding, reinventing yourself in this process, who would you think are the people who have contributed to your true growth? Actually, uh, Nanju, my uh, mother's mother, Nani, she played a huge role. She used to take me to a lot of these uh, temples and uh, she used to tell me the story of Swami Vivekananda. And she took me to a couple of times to Velurmat, which is uh, which some Swamiji has set up. So um, apparently she, she has uh, put me the seeds of, uh, you know, uh, this uh, stories and all, all this real, uh, this thing. So I would say she was the biggest influencer in my life. In, in, uh, I, and she always used to tell me one important thing, which, which always helped me in my good and bad days that, you know, uh, it is easy to forget who, who you are when you are successful. But uh, never ever forget that from where you have come and uh, never ever forget who helped you or never ever forget who contributed in your life in whatever possible ways and try to see if you can help them back. That, that message actually uh, stuck with me and uh, when I started reading Bhagavad Gita, I said Lord Krishna is also telling the same. And she used to read Bhagavad Gita and I used to disturb her, tell her what are you reading actually as a child, you know, honestly. But now I realize that uh, she she told me this very important thing actually, and uh, that so, perhaps uh, uh, see, we always use when you talk to startups this context deep uh, strategy yeah. for lunch. But <laughs> you know, nothing like a, a life lesson, right? From a point of right. context, absolutely, <laughs> so, absolutely, so. absolutely. And uh, the most importantly, I have seen and in with many of my friends and. Uh, you know, some of uh, uh, in our relatives, that grandparents actually can play a very important role in shaping you up. We say parents, but parents, you know, they have to, you know, do their work to, you know, to support our livelihood and to see us grow. But grandparents actually shapes you in many ways, which possibly we realize in the later part of our life. That, uh, that influences that teaching somewhere you know, when you discover why you did this or why you did that, I mean, when you think, why did I do this good work or why did I thought in this way, you might have relate back and say, oh, 
my nanny ta taught me this or my nana taught me this you know this these are these are uh, uh, and another thing another thing my nanny used to always tell me that human life there will be problems like look at lord rama he was supposed to become a king next day he had to go for vanavas for 14 years but he was smiling he embraced that uh, you know tough life so if tough life also comes you should be happy if good life comes you should welcome it as a god's gift right uh another thing uh, i want yeah. to ask you is uh, uh now uh, given that you become uh, you've gone in a reflective mode and uh, uh you found uh, strength to come out of your situation and now you are in a payback mode of sharing what you benefited out of it and uh, given in this and i know you uh, you probably are also in the process of writing the volume 2 yes uh, so uh, was this where do you see how do you see the future uh, uh, like uh, 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 your, your son is in us right 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 and uh, how do you see the future planning out uh, you know other convert the other day i was having a conversation about uh, uh water being so little and uh, in fact uh, i have even written in an article i made the statement almost 10 years ago saying 15 yes. years from now bangalore will be dead <laughs> so, yes yes absolutely absolutely so, so given all these fears and the fear mongering and also uh, the war hanging around and uh, people talking about budget is uh, not considered uh, not put sufficient money to defense you know all these kind of things so what what is your view to the future what do you see uh, what do you think uh, where do you think we are headed if you honestly ask me uh, there are you know every time poses different challenges you know now i was reading a very interesting article i was shocked to hear see that they are telling that as artificial intelligence and you know electronic devices are coming in it seems a human being's iq is going down <laughs> so, so so i don't know i mean but honestly uh, yeah i mean uh, again lord krishna's message is very uh, strong here if you look at it he says i am everywhere and he talks about brotherhood of my, very very uh, in a stronger way he says that you know brotherhood of mankind we should love we should have empathy we should have caring we should be caring these are things which uh, if you ask me personally i want to invoke these things uh, in whatever capacity i can do so i want to go to a more spiritual journey and i want to see that you know people stop unnecessarily hating each other you know hating uh, and they realize there are a lot of false ego we carry nanju like for example you know i have seen people boast about their high caste you know being rich lord krishna as 18.40 i think chapter 18 40 uh, sloka he says that you are um, a brahmin or a uh, you know sudra not because of your birth but because of your gunas because of what you do that makes you a human being your gunas and karmas define you and this is the message i want to tell people that you know your gunas and karma will enlighten you and as well as enlighten others and so you are far more optimistic about the future i i am always otherwise i wouldn't have been able to fight this battle out for myself actually honestly thank you and and uh, i know you hope more people uh, you know uh, not necessarily read your book because you being you i know that you don't care where people read your book but people do appreciate what is there and take advantage of it so absolutely uh, yeah, absolutely people younger generation will do that this yes, uh, nanju uh, you know it was that's why this whole effort of writing this book was that because you know they may say oh bhagavad gita it's very tough for me it goes over my head is very spiritual so i try to make it very simplified things for them to understand that it's just once you start understanding uh, bhagavad gita you will realize how valuable it is 
and most people um, uh, you know we are a country which forgets history very quick you know very quickly imagine our freedom fighters they used to you know atar bande mataram read bhagavad gita and go to the gallows so imagine the strength of bande mataram and uh, uh, bhagavad gita you know both you know it requires tremendous amount of courage you imagine i mean next day you will be hang there reading bhagavad gita you know and they utter vande mataram and go to the so our we were a nation of that stature and today we are decreasing and we are declining had we been in that stature what we put up uh, you know fight against the british whether it's under gandhi ji or anybody for that matter you know we would have been a very different nation altogether uh, uh funnily uh, uh kaushik i i just remembered uh, we used to uh, make fun of uh, our you know in a joking way we used to talk about you being the they knew <laughs> 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 what was that uh, what was the tukre tukre gang tukre tukre gang <laughs> no no the interesting thing is now now people will embrace me as a right wing guy and left now, right yeah. <laughs> now they will start giving me you know all kind of gali yeah. so that this guy has is like jay shankar and uh, nirmala sitaraman uh, or <laughs> or honorable minister so <laughs> there is a this guy has joined the bandwagon of these two <laughs> <laughs> so people are so much in a hurry to put people in boxes in boxes no in but fact, uh, thank you one of my one of my dream is to go and talk about bhagavad gita in jail i know i will be bricked <laughs> but this, let me try <laughs> no probably yeah but uh, i think what is necessary is you are uh, uh, you are able to unbox unbox it in a fashion where hopefully people will also be able to unbox their own minds and right. start opening up to things see it's not That's... about uh, uh feeling uh, you know uh, that uh, one has to be of a particular faith or changing their uh, whom they believe in but uh, uh, you know taking it uh, i mean like you put it at the end of each chapter right contextualize it to their own uh, their own situation situation so Absolutely. i think uh, that should uh, that's a great effort and i, I sincerely hope that uh, uh, people take value out of it uh, so once again uh, uh, listener audience uh, remember this we'll also give you a link to this book on uh, uh, amazon Amazing. that's where i uh, got it from so and also next we meet uh, me to take your signature here oh i'm so honored no 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 nothing of that sir so, no but, but uh, yes, sir, uh, so uh, uh, so please uh, share your thoughts questions if you have any we'll also share uh, kaushik's uh, social handles uh, whatever linkedin or, or twitter whatever you're comfortable sharing with we'll share it with uh, people and uh, please feel free to share your thoughts and uh, and if you uh, liked it if you uh, think uh, there were some takeaways for you then please further share it with your friends and your network so that they could also take benefit of it thank you thank once you. again and thank, uh, you. Thank, you. thank you kaushik thank you and, so much nanjit thank you sir it was a pleasure talking to you it was such a great pleasure seeing you after so many years Yeah, yes, I have long. seen you. I have seen you in pre-COVID days, actually. Correct, correct. Yeah, we sh- we should uh, catch up and uh, sure. and uh, and uh, wish you all the very best for the new ride in the future and also for the second part. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Pleasure, pleasure. Right. Thank you so much. Okay.